All right, so I'm a little torn on this um, exercise because I like it because we're doing estimates, but I don't like it because it's really vague questions. Like what bound can we give on this? What bound can we give on this? And so you can give an answer, but not be 100% sure if this is the best answer, even though you're pretty sure it's the only thing you can say. Um, but yeah, so we are applying this method to a symmetric positive definite matrix A, and we know that the A norm of E0 is 1, and the A norm of E10 is 2 times 2 to the minus 10. Um, okay, so if we want to know a bound on the condition number of A, uh, let's just call it kappa, and theorem 38.5 th gives us this nice inequality. Um, and so we know stuff about what happens when n equals 10, so let's just plug in n equals 10 and solve for kappa. So we plug it in and we get this is greater than or equal to this, which is this. Um, then you divide both sides by 2. Then you take the 1 over 10th root of both sides. So 2 to the minus 10, this is the same as 1 over 2 to the power of 10. And so if we take the 10th root of both sides, we end up with a 1 half on the right hand side. Okay, and then what we do is we multiply both sides by square root of kappa plus 1. And let's see here, so kappa is a condition number. So we're going to be taking positive square root here. Um, so there's no, um, like if you multiply an inequality by a minus sign, you have to change the direction of the inequality. We don't have to worry about that here. Um, but yeah, let's move, let's get all the kappas together now, and we get root kappa is greater than or equal to 3. And so therefore, kappa must be greater than or equal to 9. Um, and yeah, so that's our lower bound on the condition number. So the condition number could be really, really, really big, but it can't be smaller than 9. Um, so yeah, so there we go. And then what bound can we give on the A norm of E20? We have this. Okay, so we know that... Okay, so basically the, the answer here is not much. And um, when I'm going through this, exercise, I was actually told to use theorems 38.5 and 38.2. And so in part A we use 38.5, here we're going to use 38.2, and we're going to basically do as much as we can with these. And the only thing we know from 38.2 is that if you increase, at, like as you continue in time, the error decreases, which you would hope, or else you, why are you doing this method? But yeah, so the only estimate that we have here is that E20, the A norm of E20 is going to be less than or equal to the A norm of E10, which is basically like the very least amount that you could possibly say. So this isn't really helpful, um, but it's something. Um, and so we might think, well, we, we in part A we got this uh, bound on kappa, can that help at all? Uh, so let's, let's, let's see if it could. We have theorem 38.5 that gives us this bound. So maybe if maybe we can use our bound on kappa to plug into this formula and actually end up with a bound with up end up with an upper bound that's less than 2 times 2 to the minus 10. Um, however, it turns out that this kappa greater than or equal to 9 it doesn't give us a sharper estimate. And to prove that, first of all, let's suppose that f of x is this function here. So then it's given by this, and we can take its derivative using just the quotient rule from like calc 1. And so we get this, and this is greater than 0. Therefore, f, so f prime of x is always going to be greater than 0, which means that f is a strictly increasing function. And we can also see that at, if we take the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, we're going to get 1. And so therefore, 
the best thing that we can... So if we look at this thing on the inside here, this thing on the inside with the kappas, um, it will be the smallest when we take the limit as kappa goes to infinity. The kappa being equal, equal to 9, because that, that's basically what would happen here. Either we would plug in kappa equals 9 to get like a lower bound, or there would be some value between 9 and infinity that would give us a bound, or we would take the limit as kappa goes to infinity to get a bound. Here, the... Um... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, so f is strictly increasing. Oh, wait a minute. So then maybe we should use kappa... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Kappa is greater than or equal to 9. Right. So if kappa is small then we might be able to get an interesting bound here. But kappa can be as can be arbitrarily large. So the only thing that we can say for sure, the only bound that we can give for sure is the bound that applies when we take the limit as kappa goes to infinity. That's the only bound here that's guaranteed. And so let's let's do that. Um, as um, x because basically what we'd have to do is we have to take the interval from, we have to consider all possible val values of kappa and use the largest value on this side of the inequality that you can get. And that largest value is what you use as your upper bound because that will, upper bound will work for any kappa greater than or equal to 9. Okay, so we know f is strictly increasing. And so we're going to want to use the limit as kappa goes to infinity of this thing to get our upper bound. So if we take the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, you're going, we're going to get 1. So taking the limit as kappa goes to infinity, we're going to get 1 here. So our bound will become this is less than or equal to the limit as kappa goes to infinity of 2 times f of kappa to the power of 20, because that's exactly what this thing is here. If we take this limit, um, of course, f to the 20 of kappa, that's just going to be 1 to the power of 20, which is 1, and so our limit is 2. And this is a much less sharp estimate than this one over here. And I am actually curious now, what if we plug in kappa equals 9, then we get 2 times, let's see here, so if kappa is 9, then we get 3 minus 1 is 2, and 3 plus 1 is 4 to the 20, so we get 2, then we get 1 half to the 20, so here we actually get 2 times 2 to the minus 20. Okay, so best case scenario, we do actually get a better bound. But in general, we don't know. We're not guaranteed to get a better bound. And so, yeah, this is the only thing that we can say for sure. Uh, the only bound that we can give for sure is that the, e, the, the 20 norm or the a norm of e20 is going to be less than or equal to 2 times 2 to the minus 10. If kappa happens to be precisely equal to 9, then we get this much sharper bound of it being less than or equal to 2 times 2 to the minus 20, but that isn't guaranteed. And so yeah, that's what we were asked to find. And of course, the only other tricky thing about this is that it says what bound can we give on the a norm of e20, and so I guess that sort of leaves open the possibility that, like, maybe there's some sort of weird theorem somewhere in the book that we missed and forgot to mention, and that theorem gives you a sharper bound on this. So this isn't like, it, it doesn't ask you prove that the largest possible upper bound, or the prove that the sharpest possible upper bound is 2 times 2 to the minus 10. It doesn't ask you to prove that. It's asking you to just give the best bound. Um, and so you you don't have that sort of satisfaction of knowing that you've achieved the correct answer, but we have an answer. And I don't really see any improvements that could be made to this estimate without any more information. And so we'll just keep it here. And so we're done.